Yellowstone supervolcano hotspot and the Columbia River basalts, California West Coast. Look at the all the way on the left hand side, the Columbia River basalts. That area is around the Washington, Port, uh, Washington, Oregon area. As you can see, it's part of the West Coast in Cascadia. This is the latest Caldera Chronicles weekly column written by scientists of you at the uh, Yellowstone Volcano Observatory. This contribution is from Zach Lifton, Idaho Geological Survey, but I want us to see it together so you can see the actual maps and how they describe everything. Here we are at the Yellowstone Volcano Observatory Caldera Chronicles. This is a map that we're talking about right here. This is the West Coast. This is Vancouver Island. Seattle is, is around here. And we see the high threat volcanoes are around here. Uh, Mount Hood, Rainier, Mount St. Helens. And this is California down here. This is Cascadia. Columbia River Basalts. Map of the Northwest US showing the approximate location of Yellowstone hotspot volcanic fields in orange. Here they are. And Columbia River Basalts in gray. Two sections in north and south, you can see. The boundary of Yellowstone National Park is shown in yellow. That's it right there, the uppermost area of uh, northwest of Wyoming. It also uh, laps over into Montana and Idaho. Modified, okay. This is, uh, all right, from, okay, uh, modified from Oxford University Press. All right, so Yellowstone. The volcanic field located in northwest Wyoming, right here, near the borders of Montana and Idaho. The arrival of volcanoes in that area is geologically recent. However, volcanism associated with Yellowstone has migrated over 400 miles, here we go, across southern Idaho, Idaho, and in the past 16 million years. Yellowstone is a hotspot volcano. Volcanic hotspots are fed by plumes of hot material rising from deep in the earth, which can result in the formation of magma closer to the surface, and that might eventually erupt. As the North American tectonic plate moved southwest, southwest, through time over the mostly stationary plume, a series of eruptions Southwest is this way, I'm going to say southeast. Southwest is this way. Um, through time over the mostly stationary plume, series of eruptions occurred forming a hotspot track. The result is a chain of ancient volcanic fields that started over 16 million years ago near the Idaho, Nevada, Oregon border, and that gets progressively younger across southwestern Idaho an eastern state, sta the Snake River, this is the Snake River Plain right here. At least seven volcanic fields have been identified. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. McDermott, which began 16.5, here we go, McDermott, 16.5 million years ago. Owihi, Humboldt, 15 million years ago. Bruneau Jar Bridge right there, 12 million years ago. Twin Falls, 10.5 million years ago. Picabo, 10 million years ago. Heiss, 6.5 million years ago. And Yellowstone, 2 million years ago, right there. 2 million years ago. Evidence for these past eruptions has been documented by carefully mapped mapping of geological units as well as chemical analysis and dating of volcanic deposits. While most volcanic activity occurs near the boundaries of tectonic plates, hotspot volcanoes are unique because they can develop in the interiors of plates far from their boundaries, as we see here in Hawaii, which is in the middle of the Pacific Plate. Hotspots were first recognized after plate tectonic theory revolutionized geology. Hotspots were first, okay, and as geologists began collecting more and better seafloor data in the 1950s and 60s, they noticed strings of volcanoes lined up along straight paths. Dating rock samples from these volcanoes also revealed that they were arranged in chronological order. 
getting progressively younger in one direction along the paths. One of the best known examples of hotspot tracks is the Emperor Seamount Hawaiian Ridge. This is it right here, the Hawaiian Islands. Actually, this is a blow up of this area right here. Okay. And something here, this is also caused a bent. That's a 60 degree bent. Um, okay. Now, in chronological order, the Hawaiian Ridge, the youngest volcanoes from a hotspot, are exposed above the surface as the Hawaiian Islands, but older submerged volcanoes are stretching out over nearly 3,500 miles all the way to the Kamchatka Peninsula right here in Russia. And these are the Aleutian Islands all over Kalnik, of course. Okay, And at the same time, the Yellowstone hotspot was initially erupting at the McDermott Volcanic um, field 16 17 million years ago right there okay that's the first one right there another major volcanic event began reshaping the northwestern united states between 17 and 14 million years ago huge volumes of basalt lava erupted out of the cracks and fissures and covered much of washington oregon western idaho the Columbia River Basalts. That's it. At the same time, at the same time as this. You can imagine what was taking place there. Amazing. Yes? McDermott Volcanic Field. Another major volcanic event began reshaping the northwestern United States between 17 and 14 million years ago. Huge volumes of basalt lava erupted out of cracks and fissures and covered much of Washington, Oregon, Western Idaho, Columbia River basalts. The total volume of lava erupted was about 42,000 cubic miles, which is enough to cover the entire United States, including Alaska and Hawaii, in a layer of lava 58 feet thick. Can you imagine? Based on the chemical composition and age of the Columbia River basalts, geologists believe that they are related to the Yellowstone hotspot. One hypothesis to explain this is connection is that the Yellowstone hotspot it first formed and heated through the crust in eastern Oregon. A large reservoir of magma developed and erupted. The Columbia River basalts extended far north of the Yellowstone hotspot track, possibly because the lava, the basalt lava was deflected to the north by the complex structure in the Earth's mantle beneath the Pacific Northwest. Amazing. Yes. And the passage of Yellowstone hotspot also affected earthquake activity in Idaho, Montana, Wyoming, and Utah. In the late 1980s, early 1990s, geologists observed a unique pattern of seismicity around the Yellowstone hotspot, hotspot track. The locations of earthquakes and fault activity forms a distinct parabolic pattern around the track of the Yellowstone hotspot. The seismic parabola is sometimes described as a bow wave forming in the wake of the hotspot. Along the seismic parabola are some of the most active faults in the region, including the Lost River Fault source of the 1983 magnitude 6.9 Bora Peak earthquake and Hebgen Fault, source of the 1959 magnitude 7.3 Hebgen Lake earthquake. That's that the Hebgen Lake is just outside of the, it's at the Montana-Idaho border, just outside of the yellow perimeter of the park, right there. Okay. And um, the Hebgen Lake, yes, Hebgen Lake, the Teton Fault and the Wasatch Fault, and in contrast, the region inside the seismic parabola, that's it right there, the eastern Snake, shake, uh, snake River Plain, not, not Shake, that Snake River Plain, is almost totally devoid of seismic activity. 
inside of the parabola is almost devoid of seismic activity. So you, this is where you have the, look, this is the seismicity right there, and this is almost empty. Amazing. Amazing, isn't it? The, geologists, the, the geological events related to Yellowstone hotspot drastically changed the northwestern United States and created the extremely unique geological setting we know today, obviously. The red are normal faults. The blue are normal faults with late quaternary offset. Black is normal faults with neogen quaternary offset. The uh, solid black line approximate margin of the oldest caldera in a given volcanic, volcanic, volcanic field. And the dashed lines approximate margin of the younger caldera. Amazing. Field trip is to a stop, day one stop. All right. So um, still, there's a lot of mystery around Yellowstone. We were told that uh, it has, the, from what geologists know, the biggest magma reservoir under the magma chamber in the world. Of course, this is very well examined. Uh, we don't know if they have examined other supervolcanoes in the world. There's, I think, 20, about 20 in the whole world. One of them is in uh, Germany, by the way. So uh, the other one is... Uh, well, Another supervolcano on the United States on the West Coast is Long Valley Caldera supervolcano. But this one here has, from what they think, Yellowstone has the biggest magma reservoir of all the supervolcanoes. So this is on USGS, the latest Caldera Chronicles. If you'd like to join me on my Patreon account, you will hear content not covered by mainstream media. These riveting stories will be based on my research and I will state my opinions and give my personal insight on diverse and controversial subjects and world events, events not covered by mainstream media and not certainly on not supported by YouTube guidelines. So whatever I have on my Patreon, most of those will not be on my YouTube channel. Please consider becoming a member today. More of the, the most significant and important videos will be on my Patreon channel. Your support helps me to continue my research and keeps this YouTube channel alive. And we depend on your support, your generous charity, because we help economically challenged families here in Athens, Greece in Capota, and we also help the young generation with university tuition and the community around our church. Thank you.